Recently, Microsoft announced generative chemistry. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that is and specifically its impact on R&D? Yeah, so let me go back to that concept that we were discussing in the beginning, right, on how AI can transform the scientific method as a whole, right? And what that what, what does that mean, right? We have hypothesis generation, then we have like, you know, the analysis of the results, the experimentation, then going back to knowledge management, like the, it is a complex process, right? And, you know, the, the, we need to connect the dots across all, all of this process. So it's not that we have like one big AI model like GPT that is kind of like doing everything. We need to bring in different techniques and coordinate them within, you know, uh, um, an AI model that acts as an orchestrator to call all of these specialized models that, that run this kind of workflow, right? Generative chemistry is a key aspect of this workflow. Because what it does is it, it allows us to generate those millions of candidates to increase that search space so that we can then filter through all of that and then get to, to candidates. See, that's generative chemistry is the piece that enables scientists to really go outside of their own knowledge on their own, on their own bias and get and tap into the collective genius of the whole scientific community and you know potential answers that have never even been thought before. That is the power that generative chemistry has, and it's central to the vision that we have. Adrian, any, anything to add on? That? Indeed, generative chemistry is critical to achieving our vision. It uh, unlocks capabilities for scientists that go way beyond what can be done today. We train our AI model on hundreds of millions of molecules to help scientists discover brand new molecules, brand new atomic structures, brand new potential products. Now, generating these new materials is just the first step. Scientists will still need to 